about anybody else? Um, yeah. Well, for me, since freshman year, I've always been afraid to speak to the public, like in public. Uh -huh. And I, I guess I'm kind of getting better at talking. Yeah. More. So you have this misperception about yourself. Yes. You can stand up in front of others, and maybe somebody's going to say something. And the next thing you know, you did it, and now you can do it. So these things are uh, kind of transformations that we have inside of ourselves, these experiences that take us to the next level. And for me, I think, um, as I think back through my life, and I'll talk to you a little bit about it here in this uh, deck, in my presentation, it's all about capability. And what we are capable of doing is always that much greater than what we think we can do. Um, some of the, the easiest things that we do when we're little, walking and talking and reading or writing, we didn't really know that we weren't capable of doing those things, and so we did them. And so there's things that happen along the way that are there an eight, people are telling us, life experience, it says, hey, you can't do that. But as you'll hopefully learn today, and also through your own experiences, that we're really capable of doing anything in life. So I'm going to start with a video. Um, and this video, I don't know if you have seen it. Has anybody heard of Carl Sagan? All right, he is a, um, he's not around any longer, but he's an astronomer. He was an astronomer and an astrophysicist. And so this video was created based on some of his writings. And it has some themes that I'd love for you to pick up on um, relative to exploration, the idea of seeking, and the idea of learning. So we'll watch this first. And I forget.
They will gaze up and strain to find the blue dot in their skies. They will marvel at how vulnerable the repository of war potential once was. How perilous our infancy. How humble our beginnings. How many rivers we had to cross before we found our way. First time that I saw it, I was pretty blown away. It kind of touches you in a, it's me a dead, in a pretty personal way. And uh, it reminded me of um, always being very aware of exactly how small we are. Um, I'll bring this next time, or I'll pass it out for it to be emailed um, to Mr. Ibarra. I have this really cool um, photo of all of the universes together. And we're like, how many universes we have? There's a lot of them. Kind of drill down and you go into your planet and, and then into your um, country and then into your city. It's like you, you, it's dot, it's tiny dot. It's really hard to believe, especially when we're going through our day to day that we have like all of these things that we're trying to deal with and all of these challenges that we're being faced and this and that. We're always sort of like caught up here in our mind. If you think about it, you're sort of part of this bigger scope, this realm, you know, you kind of make things a little bit, at least for me, a little bit more digestible a little bit easier for me to kind of wade through all of that stuff that we're dealing with. So I digress a little bit. So just to kind of get back to this idea of capability and why it's important to me and why I think it might be important to you guys. I have um, two daughters, a five-year-old and a ten-year-old, and um, my decisions, I'm well aware of um, all of them, the big ticket items, things like marriage or remarriage and career and divorce birth, family, all of those decisions that I make in my life directly affect theirs. And so um, I think, you know, am I daunted by all of that? Well, sometimes, yes, of course I am. But does it stop me from doing? Does it stop me from living? Does it stop me from waking up every day and thinking that I'm actually going to make it to the next part of the day? It doesn't at all. It actually makes it that much more exciting. So when I think about, you know, why it might be important to you, this idea of capability, a lot of it has to do with the fact that you guys are students and you have the rest of your life at the front of your feet. You're going to make some big decisions. And all of that is impacted by, you know, what's in store for you. What is that going to look like? And so I ask you, the decisions that you make going forward into your senior year, into college, and beyond, are all of those decisions going to be based, based on capability, what you know you can do, or are they going to be based on your limitations and what you think you can't do? So just think about that for a little bit. All right, so we'll start to kind of like level set. Who am I? Um, how did I get here? What am I doing now? And what are my takeaways? That's kind of, the, I guess, the agenda. Um, so who am I? So these are my electronic billboards on Twitter and LinkedIn, not on Facebook. Drop the pen and everybody would gasp, but I'm not. So <laughs> this is what it is. This is how the public sees me, people who don't know me. Um, but it doesn't really say about me. It doesn't say a lot. I'm kind of being a little witty with my Twitter, and I work for EA, and I don't really know what my job is. Well, I do, but maybe people don't if they read that. So it doesn't really say a lot about who I am. So who am I really? So I read this article a few months ago. It was pretty impactful, and it was about... Um, when you go to like a party or a networking event or a new class or a club and you're meeting new people, either you introduce yourself to someone or someone introduces yourself to another person. And how do we usually do it? We say, hi, my name is Michelle. Hi, my name is George. My name is Jack. I go to high school down the street. I know Sarah. We're in band together, whatever. And that's usually it. Very basic. But does that really define who we are? Is that what makes us up? Is that, like, that's, that's nothing. That tells me nothing. You get into a longer conversation, you get to know someone, and you find out. But what would it be like, and this is what the article about, is if you, the article was about, if you actually introduce people based on what you think of them. Like, this is my friend Jack, and he's one of the most thoughtful people that I know. Or this is my friend Sarah, and she is killing it in science class right now. Or something like that, you know? It has so much more impact. So when I was putting this presentation together, or I should say re-editing the presentation, I started to think about, well, how am I going to introduce myself to you guys? 
And I didn't want to just say, hey, you know, I work for Electronic Arts and I have a daughter and that's really it because it tells you nothing. So I put this together. I am a compassionate, loving, and capable human being. I'm thankful for the gifts that I've been afforded. I'm creating incredible life experiences for me and my family. I'm choosing to do things that inspire and connect all of us together. And, you know, that was, a, it's interesting because don't, we don't always um, talk about ourselves in such a personal way. We don't always talk about ourselves in such a positive way. It's like, bragging or being humble, but I encourage you to think about how you're going to introduce yourself at the next party or the next club or how you're going to introduce your friends, because I think it will actually um, begin to change the dynamic of sort of that day-to-day. -day. It'll impact people in a much different way, and as you get older, you'll start to see that your communications, the way that you talk and interact, have um, greater opportunity to affect someone's life in a positive way than we think in the day to day. All right, so here are some of the details. So how did I get to where I am today? So some pictures for fun. Um, I was raised in Louisville, Kentucky. We were just talking about that. And in Phoenix, Arizona for the most part. I went to nine different schools in nine years. That's starting from kindergarten to high school. I either started late or left early family uh, moving back and forth between the two states. I've lived in five states. I started working at 14 years old, busing tables at a restaurant with the help of my aunt who worked there. I moved out at 17, back in with my mother at 21, which was not fun. I could be gone for a few years. Four colleges, one university. I graduated um, UCLA in 2007. I'd like to tell you that I was 20 when that happened, but I was not. Bit about that. Uh, three careers across three industries. I have a wonderful family. And some of the things that are important to me three hugs, which I don't know if you guys ever check out the profiles of your speakers, but I have a picture of that online. A scrying writer, I do it when I can, which is not often enough. And a future ultra marathon. Does anybody know what an ultra marathon is? Almost anything over a marathon. Marathon is 26.2 so anything more than that time be considered an ultra. Haven't done it yet, but it's sort of on my list. So what does all this say about me? Um, you know, I was a latchkey kid. Does anybody know what a latchkey kid is? Okay, it's an older term, but it basically means you come home after school and your parents are there and you have a key around your neck or in your pocket and you let yourself in and you stay there until your parents get home. It's pretty common today, so I think that's why most people don't know what the term is, and most probably younger people don't know what the term is, because you can find it more often than not. But it wasn't as prevalent when I was growing up in the 70s, and so I was. Um, I'll talk about moving out and moving back in. I'll give you an example of uh, some of the challenges that I faced in my own life. Uh, when I did not go to college right away, um, but when I turned 20, I knew that I wanted to go to college because that's what everybody was telling me that I had to do. Right? That's a very familiar story. And so I had it in my mind that I would um, move out to Arizona and go to Arizona State University. It was going to start my life. I had this agenda. And uh, it was all going to work out. And I moved there after moving back in with my mother and saving some money. And um, I was there for about three months. And I lost all my money because I couldn't find a job. And I spent it going out and hanging out with some new friends that I had met and all of a sudden three months later I realized that I was totally broke and had no money and uh, had no friends and I really missed my family but it wasn't easy for me to admit that I had failed and um, so I did what I could and I scrapped uh, the last couple of dollars that I had and I remember going to a uh, Circle K which is kind of like a 7-Eleven and um, making a decision between a lottery ticket and a box of ramen <laughs> I chose the ramen. <laughs> Probably should have chosen the lottery tickets. That was tough. 2007, I was um, 35 when I graduated, so it took me a long time to get into the swing of things and go to college. I worked full time doing that. And I'm not saying all of this to you guys to sort of, you know, woe is me. I'm saying all this to you um, because I am. Um, 
I didn't think that I realized at the time that I was capable of doing, that I kept doing, and at some point I realized I was capable of doing anything. Time and time again it happened, I was faced with this challenge, both as a child and as an adult. Um, and I just kept doing it. I kept doing it because I knew that it was only me that could make those changes in my life. A lot of this showed up in my career as well, three careers in three industries. I was in the restaurant industry for 12 years, fine dining, fine casual dining, and then fine dining. And I um, started out busing and made my way all the way up to a manager. And at one point, I realized that I was working every weekend and I was exhausted. And I woke up and I was 21 years old and I didn't know anything else. It was all I knew. It was restaurants. And I said, okay, well, I've got to change this. Otherwise, this is literally what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. And I moved out to California. And I was like, okay, this will be easy. I'll just get a job. And then I realized, wait a minute, I, I do have experience. And so I went and I started working at some temp agencies at the recommendation of a Disney recruiter, ironically enough, um, down at the convention center. And um, I temped for a year, and she said, do that, because then you can learn about a lot of different uh, businesses, doing a lot of different things, and see which one makes sense for you. I started at a recruiting firm in downtown Los Angeles, and about a year after that, I landed a recruiting coordinator job at the Walt Disney Company. And the rest is history. <laughs> Did I ever think that I would have a 15-year career in a corporate environment working at some of the pretty, you know, some pretty cool companies? I worked at Disney for 10 years, I worked at Activision for four, and now going on five at Electronic Arts. And uh, I would have never suspected that. But what I did know is that I would do what I wanted to do and always be focused on the future. And so here I am. I think, you know, um, as I look at this, what I'd love for you to take away from it, if you so choose, would be that we have opportunities in our life to start over time and time again. I'll speak to it a little bit here in a couple of slides, but this is the idea of sort of reinventing yourself, never settling. It's really important. Um, it was important to me, and while I'm not the type of person who would ever come to you and, like, wag a finger, I encourage you to not just with my presentation, but with anyone that comes in here um, who has a story to tell, to really listen to what those lessons are and see how maybe some of them, one of them even, could apply to your own life. All right, so here's what I'm doing now. Employer branding, I looked it up just to see what the formal definition was. And uh, the process of promoting a company or an organization as the employer of choice to a desired target group, one, one which a company needs and wants to recruit and retain. So I read that and I was like, oh my god, if I had known that that's what I was going to be doing when I started it, I probably wouldn't have gone into it in the first place because it sounds really boring. <laughs> so this is what I am doing. My team at EA um, creates stories which will, we hope, get people excited about working at EA. We market those stories across social media, events, videos, websites, and advertising. I don't know, I mean, I hope it sounds cool to you because it sounds cool to me. It sounds a lot more fun than what I just wrote. So. <laughs> you know, I really love my job. Um, I never trained for it. Um, I kind of fell into it in a sense. There was an open door. I was recruiting um, at Electronic Arts for the first five or six months of my tenure there. And um, I saw a, an opportunity to do something that was out of my job scope and it happened to do with um, um, helping um, someone on our team with events. This is super cool, and I loved it, and I threw myself into it. And then she asked me to do it again. I was like, yeah, I'll do it again. I had to do it with um, uh, E3. I don't know if anybody's heard of that convention in downtown Los Angeles, but it's an electronics convention. Anyway, so she called me up about a month later, and she's like, hey, I, you know, unfortunate news, I'm leaving. And I was like, well, I was so bummed, because I found this mentor. And she was, I'm recommending you for the job. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, that's incredible. What exactly do you do? <laughs> and um, she told me a little bit of it. And I said, OK, I'll, I'll try it. And I did. And I've been doing that for three years. And I love it. And uh, what started out as a um, team of one, which was me, is now a team of five. And that's pretty exciting knowing that you did that, You know, especially if you um, had no former experience of it. But again, back to this idea of capability, 
I knew that it was capable of something bigger, something better, and not just resting on my laurels because I had made a success in the food industry and then I had made a success of being a recruiter, and not just like, okay, well, I'm done, you know. So I took it and I did it and I love it. All right, so I like this little guy. Um, so let's agree on what's scary. And if anyone disagrees with me on these three things, I would love for you to raise your hand and please feel honest and open to tell me why, and let's discuss it. So my three are failure, taking chances, and misperceived limitations, right? Limitations. So the misperceived limitations are gonna be things like, I'm not really good enough, I'm too young, I'm too old, people don't like me, I've been told that I can't do that, um, I'm not healthy, that was a big one for me. And I guess what I say to that, I don't really see what's coming out of his mouth is like roar, or as my daughter goes, roar, but what I see is like blah, 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 because that's just all really kind of BS. I think it's BS. So let's talk about that a little bit more. All right, so let's break all of that stuff down and talk about it. So failure. Failures are actually good for you. Oh, wait, nobody answered my question from before, though. So did anyone disagree with the list? Scary stuff, failures, taking chances, and misperceived limitation? All right, cool. <laughs> failures are actually good for you. Let's flip this on our, on our head. Um, I'm gonna bring up that example of Arizona that I told you guys when I was 21, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go solve the world, I'm gonna go to ASU, I have it all figured out, I have $3,000 in my pocket. Seriously? That was a lot of money back then. Um, and I went out there and I totally failed. I had no plan, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, this road trip's gonna solve everything, and I was there for three months and I fell flat on my face. And I didn't go to college. But what it did for me is it motivated me motivated me and it was like okay that totally sucked what's next I still need to go to college I want to go to college so how am I going to do this let me make a plan let me put things into action it motivated me it spurred me to move forward so it was a fail I talk about it I will tell you all the details about it I will tell you how at 21 years old I was in Arizona knew no one went to a bar knew no one danced by myself that's how bad it was but that's okay. So, failure is good for you. The other thing, taking chances can actually be positively life-changing. Um, as I mentioned, I left the restaurant industry for a corporate career with no training and no knowledge of how to do it. And uh, it's turned out to be like one of the best things that I ever did for myself and my life and now my family because it carved out a career path for me that I never in a million years would have expected. And had I not taken that chance of saying, you know what, I'm not going to work in a restaurant every single weekend. I mean, I was making okay money, you know, and I was very social, but it really wasn't taking me anywhere. And I was like, okay, well, I need to sort of take a chance and get out of my comfort zone. And I did that. And now I'm like, you know, 15 years in, and I have, I'm very fortunate in that I have a cushion and I have benefits and I've sort of set the stage for the rest of my life and so I took that chance and I really encourage you to, to think about this in a different light in terms of taking chances and it not being scary but actually being there being a possibility that could be positively life-changing and then the last one uh, misperceived limitations are just that they are misperceived so I'll talk a little bit about sort of my health I brought that up a couple of times and I mentioned the word marathon um, I grew up and uh, I never was in a sports club and I never ran and I never really did much more than sit and hang out. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was it. And then I turned 40 and I was like, holy cow, I probably need to do something, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to do and what's the most economical way for me to actually do something. And I had a pair of what I thought at the time were running shoes, but just were regular athletic shoes, but whatever. And uh, I ran one mile, and actually, I probably ran down the block. And then I ran one mile. <laughs> and then, over the course of three years, I ran two miles, and three miles, and four miles, and five miles. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm actually enjoying this, and this is pretty cool. And 
I feel really good. And wow, I never thought that this would be really that possible. I know I could do it, right? Because I'm capable. I didn't think that that would be the thing. And I'm really excited to say that last year, or last month, I ran the LA Marathon. And that was amazing. About killed me, but it was amazing. <laughs> And uh, I crossed the finish line after running 26 to 42 miles from Echo Park to the beach. And you know, I've been in LA for 20 years now, and it ran through all the neighborhoods. And I was like, oh, I know where we are. And I just was blown away that I was actually on foot down Hollywood Boulevard and then down Santa Monica Boulevard. It was, it was incredible. So I had limitations. I had misperceived limitations that I was not going to be capable of running that distance, or I was not capable of being that healthy, or an athlete, if you will, if I could even use that word, um, that was just again. It was uh, it was all this, and I did it. And so um, I encourage you to look at the scary stuff as an open door. Those open doors that you typically don't see unless you go through the scary stuff in the first place. It's it's amazing how those happen, how that happens, where you don't see something. You take a chance, or you fail, or you overcome a limitation, you say, that's just stupid, and the next thing you go, there's an open door, and it's changed the rest of your life. Just like that. Seriously, just like that. So where have I netted with my life? And will you keep me on track, Mr. Barra, please? Yeah. I don't know what the timing is with this. Reinvention, not settling. Did that picture come through? Okay, cool. Not settling, and life will be different. Um, this idea about uh, reinvention. So life gives us opportunities to reinvent ourselves with whatever we want when we're not happy. Um, every day I would say that we are given a chance to do something different, to act in a different way, to show up to someone in a different way. Every single day, when does that happen when you're given that chance? Anybody? When does that happen? Every day. You open your eyes in the morning. You open your eyes, you wipe the crust out of it, you yawn, you go pee. <laughs> we all do it, right? That day can be different. Why can that day be different? Is there opportunities? Mm -hmm. There are, of course, there are a million opportunities. You're absolutely right. But why is that day different? Before you walk out of your bed, walk from your bed, out of your bedroom, into the kitchen. Why is that day? Why can that day be different? What's going on? It's a new day. It's a new day. But you choose to make it different. Right? We're in control of our own lives. No one else is in control of our lives except for us. You open up your eyes, wipe the crust out, go pee, and you say to yourself, today's going to be different. So reinvention. Also not settling. So uh, we all have challenges, right? Everyone knows that it doesn't matter where you're born, where you live, who your parents are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how fat you are, how thin you are, it doesn't matter. We all have our own challenges and they come from many different places. All walks of life, right? But it's what you choose to do with those challenges. It's what you choose to do. There are many people that choose to settle. Oh, I can't believe how tired I am. I can't believe last night I had so much homework. I can't believe I had to do that presentation at work. It about killed me. When is everything going to change? And then you go on with your day, and you wake up the next day, and you're like, oh my god, last night the homework was so much. It sucked. It was too much. My presentation about killed me. My boss was horrible. And then you go about your day, and then you wake up. That's settling, right? That's settling. That's you waking up, watching, wiping the crust out of your eyes, going pee, and saying, Okay, we'll do it again, you know? But that's no fun. That's no fun, right? What's fun is getting out there and doing something and being, making changes, knowing that you're in control of your life and not settling. Not settling for anything across the board, your personal life, your pending professional life, your school life, um, your emotional life unless you are 100% happy. I can tell you, after 43 years, I spent a good part of my life in one of those sectors that I just mentioned, where I was like, well, okay, this will do. It 
things. I've got all these other things. But you know what? That will give you a crutch because soon you'll be walking kind of with a limp. And you won't really understand why. So don't settle. Okay? Please. Um, lastly, I wanted to talk about your life being different. So where you are today, as you saw a couple of slides ago, kind of that roadmap of all the gazillion things that I have sort of put myself in and explored. Um, where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. And that could mean tomorrow, literally tomorrow. That could mean after high school. That could mean after college. That could mean who knows when. Life is going to be different. It's going to change. So what you know today is going to change. You're not going to have the same friends. So you can't really depend on all of that. Sort of if you can get out of that mindset of thinking that everything is just going to be the same, you're going to put yourself in a really good position. Um, I, I guess what I would say mostly with that is embrace it. Don't fight the change. Because if you embrace it, it actually can be a really fun ride. All right, so here's some um, guidelines that I have uh, been following through my life. So be aware um, of what's going on around you. Look for those open doors as we talked about. Um, pay attention to the people in your orbit no matter where you are. And don't burn bridges, trust me. Everything matters. You never know who you're gonna meet and how they're going to provide you a connection to something, it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be like a networking thing, like school or work or something. You never know what that person is going to mean for you. So I would say just be very aware of your surroundings all the time. Um, I've had a number of surprises where I've met people in the most random places and turns out that like we went to the same high school or we know the same person. And I would have never known that because I would have written them off. Okay, so kind of be aware. Also be present um, for you and for everyone in your life. This is especially important. Um, you you know, sometimes don't realize it um, in your younger years, but definitely in your older years, I think that becomes uh, more of a, an opportunity to explore at, a, at an accelerated rate. Um, mute your phone, turn off your laptop when you can, and also I encourage you to sit by yourself for like five or ten minutes a day without anything. I actually did this last night. Um, not intentionally, well, intentionally yes, but not intentionally because I knew I was going to be talking to you about it. But um, I have uh, been extremely busy at work. I've had a lot of priorities in both my personal and my professional life. And I came home and realized that I, if my, I reached a point where like, my head was buzzing. That's not a good thing when your head is buzzing. Like you can't, like you're you know, trying to do things and you never, you're never really finishing, you're going to do this and that. It, it's too much. So I intentionally went up to my room, sat in my bed, and did nothing. My phone was nowhere to be seen. I was I was very tempted to pick up an iPad and start surfing and the magazine that I saw on the floor, but I didn't allow myself to do it. I fully turned off for at least like 11 minutes. I just sat there, and here's what happened. My heart rate came down. I heard the neighbors next door. I heard the dog outside. I heard the refrigerator humming. It was the most incredible experience that I had. So I say this to you, not that I'm doing it every single day, but I encourage you to do it. It will astound you. Be present is not only with yourself, but with your family and your friends. Take the time to actually sit down with someone, put your phone away, your backpack in your purse, and just sit there, you know? And listen to them talk. Don't, um, feel the need to chime into the conversation. If you allow yourself to just sort of settle into the moment, I can tell you it will be profound. And the other people that you're with will notice too. So consider it. Be loving. So loving, foundation of life, I believe. And um, oh, free hugs. Does anybody know what that is? Have you ever heard of the word free hugs as a term or a concept? Okay. So this is kind of fun. Um, my partner and I, we go down to the Santa Monica Promenade every couple of months. And we stand on the corner of uh, Santa Monica and 3rd Street. And we hold up signs that say free hugs. And we wait to see who comes and 
Let's hug. And we've done this for a year and a half. And uh, it's an incredible experience because there's some people who are like, I don't get it. What are you selling? There are some people like, who literally will run across the street and like cannonball you and throw themselves at you because they're so excited. There are some people who are completely skeptical and some people who are fully in it. And um, I bring up this idea of be loving because without it, I think this world would be a pretty yucky place. Probably be that scary place that we were talking about. Um, I had real fast this um, scenario where this guy came up to me and he was seven and a half feet tall, no joke, seven, white too, <laughs> guy, an older man. And I came up to me and he just sort of stood there and you know, I'm five seven, so I'm like, hi. And he's like, can I have a hug? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, are you sure you can reach up here? And I was like, yeah. And I literally like curled myself up on him and I gave him a hug and he sort of held on to me. And the one role, if you will, that my um, partner and I have is that we don't let go until the other person lets go. And he held on and he held on and then he let go. And then I fell down <laughs> to the ground and he said, thank you. He said, I don't get a lot of hugs. He goes, I'm too tall. People don't want to hug me. And like it, it kind of broke my heart. Anyway, he came back an hour later and got another one. So be loving. Be kind. Um, is it easier to be kind or to not be kind? That's not a trick question. <laughs> it's easier to be kind, right? It's easier to be kind. To smile at someone. To look them in the eye, hold the door open, pick something off the floor if you dropped it. It's trash. It doesn't affect you, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's easy to be kind, you know? It's a little thing I think that makes the biggest difference. All right, last guideline, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Be in control of your life. It's probably the biggest one for me. Bye, thank you. Thank you. No one else is in control of your life, you guys. It's just you. So um, what I leave you here today with um, is for you to take this some time, you know, tonight or tomorrow or whatever, um, and think about being in control of your life. Think about your own capability, okay, and how great that is. Not how small it is, but how great that is. And if you think about that, think about it the following day, too. Think about it the following day, too. And soon it sort of becomes this mantra, you know, in your head. You wake up in the morning, you get the crust out of your eyes, and you go pee, and you're like, I choose for today to be different. I choose to do anything that I want. And I choose to be happy. You know? It's actually not that hard. And I think, um, you know, thinking about you guys in this classroom, you've already made a lot of those choices. You're already making waves about who you are, you're speaking to the world about the choices that you want and the person that you want to be, that's huge. So keep doing that. Don't let that ever change your essence. Um, you know, I'm not really anyone special at all. Uh, I am from the Midwest. I moved out to California. I'm a child of divorce. I had an absentee father. I had a lot of careers. I had children. Um, I went to so many schools, I, I can't even count them. You know, this is I'm probably one of a million people in this country that have that, that story. Um, but I think what, what makes me different, if you will, is that I chose to not let that cycle of craziness define who I was. I chose to keep control of my life. I chose to do anything that I want. And I chose to not settle, I chose to reinvent myself, and I chose to live a life of joy and happiness. And so um, I encourage you to think about that. Carl Sagan, that video that we watched, um, said it best, I think, that we are only bounded by the earth and the ocean and the sky for all of our failings, despite our limitations and fallibilities, the humans are capable of greatness. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions, guys?
Um, how do you feel at the end of the day after you give the free hugs? Like, really good. <laughs> really good. It's crazy. The first time that I did it, probably the first like few times, we walked down the Third Street Promenade to our car, and we were buzzing. Like our skin was buzzing. I've never experienced it, and that's what brought us back to do it. And we bring extra signs too, so we just hope. And we've had like people, oh, I really want to do it. We're like, yeah, grab a sign, and then they do it, and it's awesome. And it creates like this really cool unity. We've made some friends, Instagram friends, still. You know, actually, some people. One person is coming to my wedding in June, so that's kind of neat. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, if you guys do have any questions, just take my email down. I totally don't mind if you reach out. We have one in the middle. In the back. Oh, right yeah. Here. She has a question. Oh, um, what I can see really, like, positive and joyful. Like, was, have you been like this all your life, or you have, like, a change in point? Um, you know, I'm not, like, I am positive. Thank you for saying that. That makes me happy. It means it's coming off in a good way. So, yes, I am. I am a positive person. Um, I think that... I just don't like the way I feel when I'm negative. I feel, you know, my life is not cherries and roses. I'm not, you know, what is it? What do unicorns do? They like sprout glitter. I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> but um, I choose to look at things in a positive light. I choose to not associate myself with people who are consistently negative because I feel like it, it sort of brings me down. And, um, so as far as me being like this my whole life, you know, it's hard for me to remember when I was little because there was so much going on. I was just following my mom around and, you know, moving all across the country. I think that in the past, um, I'm going to say 10 years, yeah, I have. I've been very conscious about showing up positively to the people that are around me and um, being there for them as well. Um, I don't like to work as an individual. I like to work and be connected with people. I don't mean work like professional work. I mean like work together to make this world better. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right, guys. Well, hey, listen. Um, congratulations on being a part of this. And congratulations on being in control of your life and making these kinds of decisions, decisions and showing up the way that you do with your, your family, uh, your families. And you wouldn't be here otherwise. Good luck with everything, and yeah, like I said, don't hesitate to keep in touch. Okay. All right, guys. Cool. All right, thanks again. Before you leave, though, we'd love to take. A, oh yeah, the group photo. Group photo. Yes. Yeah. Come on, guys. Cool. Joshua, do you want to be in it? Yeah. Okay. Well, she said so. At least I need another. <laughs> yeah.
This is the age of uh, Instagram and Twitter, so now we have this one's phones, maybe a couple photos too, alright? Check. Last one. Last one. Oh, oh. that's good. Uh, Hello, there we go. Alright, you ready? Yes. One, two, three, eight, look at me. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Alright, thank you. These are USBs. We use them for school, okay? Or I'm sorry, no. to charge your phone. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Love it.